Tuesday, December 20th, 2016. This is a special meeting of the Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Good morning. Let the record reflect. Commissioners Johnson, Soboroff, Figueroa Villa, and Goldsmith are present, and we have a quorum. Number one on the agenda, public comment. We have one comment card, two comment cards. We have Jamie Garcia. I'm sorry, and Michael Williams. Good morning. So I wrote this last night, um, just reflecting on the, la the latest murder, which brings us to about 21 now. Um, we live in a stalker state of hot spots and heat lists with the black community as your primary target. You trace, you track, you kill. Ryan Joseph is his name. Number 21, your institution is a failure that brings, develops, facilitates nothing but violence and death. Your cups of Joe, your hot dog handouts are pathetic. Your programs and your actions continually demonstrate the same results over and over again. How much more data do we need? Your racism, racism and hatred is obvious. You see us all as domestic terrorists and you use counterinsurgency <coughs> tactics and weapons as war on our communities. You attempt to discredit us, saying we had a gun, we were located in a high crime area, you attempt to disrupt our communities with your presence, what you call a deterrence factor. You attempt to neutralize us with your ARs, your tasers, your guns, your batons. You attempt to dismantle our communities, our lives. You attempt, but even at this, you fail because everything you do is a failure. And we will not stop because we are not interested in your law and order. We are only interested in justice. Michael Williams. Before I start my time, I want to request that public comment remain open for at least another 15 minutes because there's people outside who are waiting to get in who were here at 8 o'clock, before 8 o'clock, and your officers had to hold them up, individually screening everyone at one at a time. So that's why they're, they're still not allowed in. So I, w I would request that you at least allow public comment to remain open for at least <coughs> the next 15 minutes so people can actually get in here and actually speak about what they feel like they need to speak about. Hold the clock for a minute. If you have a card, if you have a card now, submit it, and we'll we'll hear it. Go ahead and start the clock, please. Mr. Williams. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Detective Jones is informing there are no people in the lobby currently. Okay, thank you. So, if anybody that's in the room right now that wants to submit a card, will accept. So, um, I first want to start off by saying that. You know, the scare tactics, the, the stuff that you guys do, this whole thing about 8 a.m. in the morning and public comment coming first and all this stuff that you do to try to silence the voice of the people does not work. Matt Johnson, you should know. Because you have one of our people hemmed up just because he wants to talk to you. I know that was you. If you want to speak to me, just call me. Let's have a meeting. How are we going to call you? I've never refused a meeting with anyone. How are we going to call you? How are we going to call you? <coughs> you come here every week. You, you know how to, f I'm not hard to find. How are we going to call you? We wanted to speak to you and your neighbors. And we wanted to talk about why, why you specifically have not done anything since you've been the president almost a year now to stop the violence that is going on by police. Y'all killing people over the weekend, killing children. It's like y'all do this for fun, like, oh, let's, this weekend, let's go kill somebody. It seems like the more we come here, the more people you kill. So y'all think it's a game. So we wanted to talk to your neighbors, but then you had somebody arrested. You had somebody detained and brought to a, to a police station because you were afraid of the people. You're afraid of what people can do. So you, the scare tactics, the, 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 the stuff about you, about this whole meeting being at 8 a.m. in the morning and having public comment first so people can't get in and speak their mind, 
It's not going to stop the people from speaking their, their mind. Because if they can't speak it here, they're going to speak it out in the streets. And I'm not threatening you. <coughs> Let's make that clear. Because I don't want to be holding up, put in detention for questioning on an investigation. I'm telling you what, the, what John Locke says, the philosopher. He says, when a government does not speak, uh, uh, uphold its people, it will eventually be overthrown. Thank you, Michelle. For the, rec for the record, the reason why we started the meeting this morning at 8 o'clock and the only item on the agenda th this morning uh, is public comment is because uh, myself and many of the command staff and many of my fellow commissioners uh, want to attend the funeral of Captain Ed Pape, who uh, tragically died last week and his funeral is today. So the only item on the agenda today is, is public comment. And we started at 8 so that we could uh, support his his family and his loved one, loved ones in their in their moment of loss. The family to vote to be killed. The vote by his own. How about you do that? One call it. Before speaker, we go on please. to the next speaker, I'll let the record reflect Commissioner McLean Hill is now present. And the next speaker is Michelle DeMont. hardly had time to even gather my wits coming into this room. We were standing outside, 10 of 8. We were told we had to wait and wait and wait and wait. After 8 o'clock, finally, the officers, which there were about 15 of them, watching us, the public, who are coming to a public meeting, that's my taxpayer dollars paying those officers, then we were escorted one at a time, extremely slowly, into this meeting. So as soon as I sat down, you had already closed the public comment time. And I opened it back up. Yes. For how many people? For everyone that was either okay. in the lobby. Okay. For everyone that was either in the lobby or in the room. Okay. Well, let's just see what happens here. And we tried to get an appointment with you on Thursday. Your assistant said, oh, well, you're not in town, and you're not going to be available, and blah, blah, blah. We are going to push for that appointment. If you tell us you are so accessible, then give us a time to talk to you. We are going to be contacting your assistant on a daily basis until you set up an appointment with us. This is completely ridiculous. And then... You profile a person and have them pulled out by the police for questioning. That is completely ridiculous. We are a community in pain. We are a community in pain because people keep getting killed. Young people in our city keep getting killed by police and nothing, 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 nothing happens except that our taxpayer dollars have to pay their families. In this month alone, $8 million. That is a crime. Thank you. The next speaker, Michael Novick, followed by General Dogan. I'm sure the death of that captain is a tragedy, and I'm sure there are many other tragedies that you're not responding to, like the last <coughs> killing that just took place a day ago. Uh, you know, it says up there, Board of Police Commissioners, Los Angeles Police Department. That's not correct. You're not the commissioners of the Los Angeles Police Department. You're the police commissioners of the city of Los Angeles, and you're responsible to us and not to the LAPD. Uh, you know, the, the Board of uh, Airport Commissioners does not work for the airport. They work for the people of Los Angeles. The Board of Police Commissioners does not work for the police department. It works for the people of Los Angeles. You play the same games that they do. They play good cop, bad cop, to try to break people down and force them to uh, 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 speak against their own interest. You play good commissioner, bad commissioner for the same reason. You're trying to pretend that some of you are on our side and some of you are, are hostile dogs like uh, uh, Steve Soboroff. But the fact is that all of you are playing the same game, and the game is to try to f uh, cool people out and chill people out and pretend that uh, nothing is happening here. But something is happening here. The people are waking up to the fact that you're part of the problem, not the solution. General Zogan, followed by Prentice Jenkins. Uh, 
General Dogon, civil rights organizer with LA Cam. Uh, I, I wanted to speak to Beck. He's not here today, though. But uh, but nevertheless, uh, born and raised right here on Skid Row. And uh, I would have to say, uh, I grew up in South Central, and I don't think there's a a, a part of the community that that, re that really look at y'all, the LAPD, as being police officers. In fact, um, I look at you as being pigs. Uh, I look at you as being terrorists. Because when you come through our community, we don't feel safe. You got kids that take off running when you come through our communities. People hide. Uh, people get shot. People get tickets. People go to jail. And everybody get harassed. Talk about Bin Laden, talk about ISIS, talk about all the terrorist groups around the nation. I don't think they putting it down on citizens the way LAPD is. And I would just, just came here to just remind y'all that, that we don't look at you as police officers. We look at you as being pigs. And by the way, we're still waiting on that video from Charlie Africa <coughs> with the hand on the girl. Prentice Jenkins. Prentice Jenkins, Peace Between Residents and Police. Good morning. I'd like to acknowledge the Honorable <coughs> Matt Johnson, Honorable Steve Soberall, men with character who are trying to get things done. I'd also like to end this year with a Nat King Cole song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost snipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir. And folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe will help to make the season bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Santa's on his way. They, he's loading lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child will stop and spy to see if reindeers really get high. And so I'm offering this simple phrase for kids from one to 92. Although it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Ramadan to you. Thank you. Well done. The next speaker is Wayne, followed by Greg Akili. Yes, from now on, we're going to hold meetings at 8 a.m. in the morning because it's so convenient for the community to come out here. It's a good idea. So, why the early meeting? Is everybody getting out of town early? And I notice there's this long agenda that you have here today. That's a hundred page agenda. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. But anyway, your good friend, Mr. Lolly, has told me the truth about how you do these cases for discipline. You have the written rules and the unwritten rules. So what you do is, is that you hang the police officers to cover your unwritten policy conduct. And what is your unwritten policy conduct? Anything you want. Shootings, okay, authorized. What happens if you get caught? You reach for my weapon, he reached for my belt. Policy. So it's not these poor little officers, the little pawns on the chessboard. It's not Mr. Parker. It's a five of you and Lurch over there. 
And yes, even the horseman, Charlie Horseback, who's not here today. And our little friend here. Oh, look. Oh, we have a new person here. Look at this. What, hap what happened to the Bustamante man? Somebody is sitting in Bustamante's chair. Well, you, you know what you guys did? You're going to the state bar against him to take his license away because Mr. Bustamante decided not to play anymore. So now he's going to lose his bar license and he's going to be living in a trailer down by the river, going to the FBI and testifying against you. Wah, wah. Another fuck up. Greg Akili, followed by Pete White and Melina Abdullah. So I'm Alina Abdullah. Um, so we know that the 8 a.m. time, the 9.30 time is never convenient for the community, but the 8 a.m. time is really inconvenient for the community. Um, still, we're here. And the reason we're here, and one of the reasons that we're here, um, especially today, is that police killed another young black man two days ago. His name was Ryan Joseph. He was 20 years old. He was loved by the community. Um, many of us were out at the candlelight vigil for him last night. Um, his mother is mourning. His family is mourning. His community is mourning. And as we were having conversations with community members, they said that the treatment that Ryan Joseph received is the same treatment that all black men in the South LA community receive. He's profiled. He's chased, he's assumed to be a criminal just for standing there and even police accounts say that the reason that the officers chased him is because he put his hands near his waistband. Last time I checked, that is not illegal. It's not illegal to put your hand near your waistband. Matt Johnson, I know you live way out in Sherman Oaks and other people know that too. Um, but you're still a black man and I understand you're the father of, of, of black sons. So this is something that affects you. This is something that affects you. They don't know that they're the police commission president's sons when they're walking down the street. And so you need to think about what kind of oversight you are really giving. And so we need to lift up the name of Ryan Joseph and say that we'll stand here even at 8 a.m. in the morning. We'll say his name. Ryan say his name. Ryan say his name. Ryan and so it is, I should say. Thank you. The next speaker, Paula Miner, followed by Mr. Herman and Mariela Saba. We are here again to try to ask for some change. Um, as evidenced by the shooting of Ryan Joseph just a couple of days ago, all this talk that we've gone through about de-escalation, about changes in policy, didn't ever get any farther than this room. Despite your efforts to silence us, your efforts to discourage us from coming here, to discourage us from speaking out, we are going to continue to come. We are not giving up. This is a place where we're supposed to come despite your efforts to make it not that kind of place. Um, you know, you change the time of the meetings, you make it incredibly early. We talked about even 9.30, the regular time, not being accessible for most people. Um, you continue to arrest and charge protesters when they are speaking out and your representatives, including Mr. T. Fink, come to the trial and distort the truth in the courtroom. But we're still going to come. We're still going to come. We're still trying to bang, bring truth to this power. Again, for the rest of my time, I'm going to stand here silently in the name of Ryan Joseph, another name that's added to the long, long list of black men, brown people, brown, black and brown people, who have been unnecessarily killed by LAPD.
and we will say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Mr. Herman. Good morning. Such an incredible morning. When you hear the outcry of the public in the terms of the Ralph M. Brown Act 54950, Mr. Inspector General, I would recommend that you get a hold of the Department of Justice and look into the recommendations brought out by the public when it comes to the ADA violations towards people or individuals who have disability that live on the streets, who are hampered and killed by the process of a broken down system. If it were not broken, I wouldn't be standing here this morning running from block to block to get here at eight o'clock in the morning. So maybe the recommendations of the public are important. Maybe we should change them to an evening event every so often so that you can hear the, the outrageous outcry of most people who are just sick and tired of reading and hearing of the violence brought against civilians in our streets today. And what about the closed session meetings? Are we not a part of that? Can we not contribute to our participation in what we have to say and what we say in regards to what's typically not a part of a uh, formality of um, professionalism? Because most of us want to speak out our minds. That's what diffuses us from participating in the violence brought by LAPD. I'm not saying that most of the officers here are violent, but the ones who are involved with violence, let's take for example, and this is, has nothing to do with the LAPD, Lee Baca, the old man with Alzheimer's. What a fool. That's his, that's his, his way of getting out of the, the situation of reckoning and, and coming against the FBI in an investigation. Maybe we should ask the FBI to investigate maybe some of the behavior brought by some of you in our Ralph M. Brown Act violations to hamper us from our testimony and our participation. Title II discrimination must stop and come to an end with LAPD. Thank you. Next speaker, Mar Mariela Saba, followed by Audrey George, <coughs> Samira Saba, and Zach Siegel. It will, it will get restarted. I'm going to begin with a moment of silence to bring in the presence of Ryan Joseph into the space that we all bring together. Ryan Joseph Presente, present through the community that is here. <coughs> brings your spirit into the space and your memory. 21 human beings murdered by LAPD, 2016. This year's not over. And this violent police force, violent violence, police is violence, is still in our streets. They're still in our communities, still a threat. Over 1,029 people murdered across the US. LAPD contributed 21 bodies, people, families, to that large, shameful reality that we live in, and that you all sitting up there oversee and perpetuate and allow. So we continue to be present here because there's no other place to be right now than here to make sure that these people are lifted and that this stops. That you feel their spirit and their presence and that we all as a community stop this. And don't be fooled by the infiltrators who continue to take up space here Audrey George. All of you with children and grandchildren, 
you know, I mean, one of the most basic things, if your 12-year-old throws a baseball through a window, you, they pay for it. You take it out of their allowance. They do chores. They, there's accountability. This police commission is supposed to be holding the LAPD accountable. One of the first things I, a person with any sanity would have to ask is, when the police murder people and then are fined or have to pay damages, why does it not come out of their own budget? Why do the taxpayers have to pay for this? Basic accountability. And I'd like to use the rest of my time to uphold the name of Ryan, um, George, uh, Joseph, I'm sorry, who was shot down running in fear this young, young man running in fear from his murderers. And I would like to allow the room to express their grief with a, a moment of silence, please. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. The next. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. The next speaker, please, Samira Saba, followed by Zach Siegel. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Samira. I'm a resident of East Los Angeles my whole life. Um, I've grown up with the LAPD above my head and around my home space my whole life. Um, I've grown up to understand that there are so many things that we can do that don't look like a gun or something to hurt someone or incarcerate them. I wish these things for my community. Any idea that comes from the LAPD is a bad idea. I know the history of how these institutions were made. You have to look at slavery. If you don't understand or believe, even believe in racism, then you're not living in reality. <coughs> you're not present with the truth. If you endorse the LAPD, you do not believe in children. You do not believe in our future. In something that is positive, you don't give a child access to a cell. You give them access to love, attention, opportunities. <sighs> Every time I come down to LA, I'm not even living here. I'm off in college. I hear someone else is killed. I'm not surprised. It's the same thing. And I want to give a shout out to the two infiltrators sitting right here who I called out last time I was here when I didn't speak up. Red and with long hair. Pete White, Black Lives Matter in Los Angeles Community Action Network. I think oftentimes it's important to go backwards to understand why we're still here. And we are still here. In 1951, W.E.B. Du Bois and William Patterson petitioned the United Nations in a document called We Charge Genocide. And I'm going to read you an excerpt from a section entitled Our Humanity Mocked and Denied. This was 1951. Once most of the violence against Negroes occurred in the countryside, and that was before the Negro immigrations of the 20s and 30s. Now, there is not a great American city from New York to Cleveland or Detroit from Washington, the nation's capital, to Chicago from Memphis to Atlanta or Birmingham, from New Orleans to Los Angeles that is not disgraced by the wanting killing 
of innocent Negroes. It is no longer a sectional <coughs> phenomenon. It goes on to say, once the classic method of lynching was the rope, now it is the policeman's bullet. To many an American, the police are the government, certainly its most visible representative. We submit that the evidence suggests that the killing of Negroes has become public police policy in the United States and, the pol and that the police policy is the most practical expression of government policy. That's 1951. And we're still here today holding up the name Ryan Joseph and Ezell Ford and the, and the list continues as folks just look at, out at us and do virtually nothing. We charge, we charge genocide. Our humanity is mocked and denied. But we'll die on our feet before we lie down on our knees and just accept it. We're still here. Say his name, Ryan Joseph. Ryan Joseph. Say his name, Ryan Joseph. Ryan Joseph. Zach Siegel. You all know I'm not Ryan Joseph, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Akili. Uh, and a week ago or so, I was <coughs> in trial. The trial is over now, but the trial for you continues. Ryan Joseph's name is here to be lifted up. One more black person killed by LAPD. One more black person who will be found in policies, whose killing will be found in policy. One more black person that goes on the list of a long list of us who have been killed here. At some point, our lives have to matter as much as everybody else's lives. At some point, we are going to be as equal as others. At some point, at some point, we will be able to stand here and not condemn as much <laughs> at some point, but this isn't it. Not today. Not today, because Ryan Joseph, and in, by tomorrow, we will be reading what a terrible person he was. We will be reading how he didn't love his mother. He will, we will be reading how he didn't make and eat apple pie. We will be reading the denigrated lies about this person. So in Ryan Joseph's name, we come here this morning at 8 o'clock. In Ryan Joseph's name, we come here. And we add two other points to protect and serve. It ought to be control and suppress. Because that's what happens here with us. And that's why Ryan Joseph, Ezel Ford, and a number of others are not here with us today. Because your emphasis is more on control and suppression, and in this case, murder, than it is on protect and serve. No more Ryan Joseph. Say his name! Ryan Joseph! 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 Say his name! Thank you. We have please. We have no other comment cards on this item, sir. Or now an item. Zach's here? Okay, Zach, thank you. I just want to um, set aside these minutes for, uh, for holding up the name of Ryan Joseph, who was killed by LAPD officers yesterday.
order, please. Thank you. We're now on item number two, closed session. We have eight common cards on 2A1, OIS 101.15. We begin with Michael Novick, Wayne, and Paula Miner. You know, you had a problem that you had to go to a funeral today and you chose to start early. You could have taken advantage of that to have a meeting in the evening in the community. Um, you know, you're, you're, uh, I'm looking at this sheet. You have officer-involved shooting number 101 15. 101 people were shot by the LAPD in 2015, you're telling us? One sergeant and three police officers involved in shooting uh, Mr. Hua on December 29th, a year ago. So you're actually catching up a little bit. You're, you're not uh, over a year behind as you used to be. When are you gonna get around to dealing with the case of Ryan Joseph? Next Christmas? You, you, you scheduled a meeting today and did no business. I can't believe the police commission of the city of Los Angeles has no business to do in public session. A and maybe if you did some of your business and actually put in place policies to prevent these killings, you wouldn't have to have all these uh, closed session sessions. Every, every week we come here and there are two or three incidents of dog bites and people uh, uh, beaten and people shot by the police. And you do them privately and then you, you say you're gonna reschedule, a, a reconvene an open session to announce your decisions and 99 times out of 100 or 100, uh, 990 times out of 1,000, your decision is that the police uh, involved were within policy. And so what's the point of that charade? What's the point of st uh, having us come here and you sit here and pretend that you're actually overseeing the police department when in fact you're rubber stamps? Beck isn't here, where did he go off on a vacation? Uh, apparently you have this acting inspector general because you got rid of the inspector general. So, uh, you know, this is a, a game of musical chairs you're playing here. And it's time to stop and time to get serious about what your responsibility is which is to oversee the police department in the interest of the people of the city of Los Angeles and not to oversee the people of the city of Los Angeles in the interest of the police department. Wayne? Yes, OIS T <coughs> involving four cops. Well, the good one's the second one. This one here, this is just, this is nothing. It's the second one that's the good one, isn't it? And today, because we're all transparent, we're going to hold this hearing in open session today, right? We're going to bring this out into the open, correct? Well, you, you really, really fucked up last week because, see, Mr. Sergeant Parker had his ethics hearing at the Ethics Commission across the street. And you know what happened? You had to air your dirty laundry on what your policies are, your unwritten <laughs> policies. So what you do is, is you judge these cases in closed session on ongoing unwritten policy as implemented. So that means if a cop sees somebody and they shoot them, it is within the unwritten but current policy to say they reached for the waistband. That's why you won't let us see your deliberations because you see, if we saw your deliberations of what you're gonna do, because you're gonna clear every one of these cops today. It's automatic. Because if you don't clear them, then they have to go to trial. And then that has to become public and what is their defense? Exactly what Sergeant Parker did and Mr. Lawley did on behalf of the LAPPL the policies include written and unwritten enforced policies by the department by longstanding conduct. So your longstanding department policy on December the 29th, 2015 was to shoot innocent unarmed suspects and that's why they're within policy. Fucking sickening. Paula Miner followed by Melina Abdullah. Is 
that was is that it. accurate? There was no cards back there, so we just took them. Okay, we'll call we'll call all the cards that are that are submitted as of right now in two A one. Next speaker, Paula Miner, followed by Melina Abdullah. Speaking on the closed session, um, item 2A sometimes seems useless. I think that session should be a closed concurrent session because usually what happens in those sessions based on the outcomes that we get is a concurrence by this group with whatever has been recommended to them by LAPD, which continues not just by our statistics or by our voice, but by everybody, every, every organization that is counting and collecting the statistics that shows that no police officers are ever found accountable for the murder, for the shooting, for the killing in custody, for all the questionable deaths that occur, and we simply label them as OIS. Um, you know that in about a year to 18 months, we'll see the name of Ryan Joseph on a piece of paper like this with numbers and uh, the number of officers that you say were involved in killing him. And in closed session, you know, where no one can hear what has happened, we'll find that Ryan Joseph's death you will rubber stamp and say it was okay. These are the expectations you've set for our community. This is why people continue to come. People continue to protest. We continue to fight back. We continue to stand up despite all your efforts to silence us, all your efforts to ignore what's going on. Um, I'm gonna use the rest of my time. You might as well become familiar with the name because you'll talk about it for 18 months. Say his name. Ryan Say his name. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. The next three speakers, Melina Abdullah, Paul, and Michael Williams. I'm sorry. Paul and Pete White. So it's interesting to me that when we say, say his name, none of the commissioners, none of you all up behind the desk, will say the names, as if you're not a part of us. You all are supposed to be the Civilian Police Commission. The killing of Ryan Joseph is supposed to affect you. It shouldn't be controversial for you to say his name. This is a somebody's son. So when we say say his name, it should be something that you want to say. This is a life. This is a life. And when we say OIS, right, it's sad that the community even knows that term, OIS. We shouldn't know it. It shouldn't happen with such regularity that when we say OIS, everybody knows we're talking about a police killing, right? It shouldn't be that the life of a 20-year-old is now uh, just another OIS. So when we say, say his name, say his name. He's a person, he's a human being. He had a soul and a spirit that we're summoning so that he knows we haven't forgotten him. You're supposed to be struggling for justice for him. You're supposed to be struggling for justice for him. Why can't you say his name? Why can't you say the name Waikisha Wilson? Why can't you say the name Ezel Ford or Riddell Jones or Brother Africa or so many that we could fill the rest? I only have 20 seconds. It would be easy for me to list those names. Police have killed 21 people so far this year. Let's say their names. Can you do that? Say his name. Can't do it, huh? Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Say his name, Shane. Ryan Say his name, Cynthia. Ryan Thank you Say for your name, comments. Steve. Next speaker, the please. Next speaker no. is Paul. No, you're not here for the people. You're not here for people whose lives have been stolen. What are you here for? Next speaker, For your please. career? The next speaker, Paul. 
followed by Michael Williams. That, apologies, I keep skipping Pete White. Followed by Pete White. Um, I'm just going to take this time. I, I feel like it, when I look at, like, specifically you, Steve, you, you represent the death culture that is white supremacy. And, and I think I've probably covered that a few times, but I was looking a little bit into, like, your, your Twitter feed and the way that you kind of define yourself in opposition to someone like Donald Trump. Um, you know, you, I think you were mocking people using the term make America great again. Um, and I feel like what you, the subtext is like that America, America in the 50s, you know, the, the time that, that maybe Trump represents to you was unacceptable. But your life is built off of the two pillars that I think of when I think of America. Theft of indigenous lands, right? And then <laughs> theft of of black bodies and, and, and their labor. Um, you know, initially, Playa Vista, I feel like, is probably your, 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 your biggest commercial success as a developer. There, we're looking at desecration of, of, of the Tongva people's most sacred site. Um, now, the list of black bodies, right, under your watch that have been killed by the LAPD. I mean, Melina was just talking about how how we could sit here and, and just list the Waukesha Wilsons, the Ezel Fords, the Ryan Josephs, the Keith Bercy's. You are, I mean, you are Donald Trump. You can, you can try to fool us into thinking that you're some sort of respectable, inclusive Republican white man, <laughs> but what you are is, is the epitome of the violence you're, that, you're that the death culture of white, Wait, I'm talking, wait, you, you, have a, you have a death, right, that you're investigating, and I'm getting to the source of, of the ideology behind that death, and the individual is, who's upholding the entire system, I mean, how is that off topic? Thank it you. is the topic, right? Our next speaker, Pete White, please. Pete White, so it's interesting, closed, se uh, closed session item A and B. Public employee discipline, dismissal, release, public employee performance evaluation. And when we put that sort of in line with your job, your evaluation of your chief, because ultimately that's who we're evaluating each and every time Discipline comes back in favor of the department, and he makes the ultimate decision to lessen the punishment for officers. It has a direct bearing on your power or lack thereof of governing this body. When I think about this discipline and process, and I think about the charter, I'm thinking about what's happening across the street and how you're going to be pulled into the conversation that evaluates how to remove power from the chief for three years and then give the power back to the chief who comes after him. So ultimately what we are talking about in this evaluation is that you're going to go through a process and you're going to agree with the mayor and others and say, yes, we need to remove Beck's ability to appoint the two police officers to the Board of Rights. But when Beck is gone, we will give that power back to whoever the chief is. That's called a vote of no confidence. And if you're talking about leadership, what you should really be talking about right now is removing Beck. What we should be talking about if we're opening up the charter is putting the names of the deceased on this piece of paper. What we should be talking about if we're talking about discipline is how you retain the power to actually say what needs to happen with this department. Say his name. Ryan say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. The next speaker, Michael Williams, followed by Mr. Herman. Yeah. 
So the 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 evolved shooting that happened last year was supposed to be a, a suspect, suspected murder suspect who was injured, um, and that's just one of the more your parts that just adds on to the to the numbers of people who you've shot um, and not killed, surprisingly. Um, and we we're sitting here and we're at a day where we're at a day that a week that's supposed to be about family and it's supposed to be about good cheer. Um, and there's people families who will have to spend this year and many years to come without their loved one in their life, <laughs> without their father, without their son, without their daughter, without their mother, either through the officers of all shootings that kill and claim so many of us, or through the prison industrial system, or through poverty, or through the lack of mental health resources within the black community. And you're all responsible for this. Matt Johnson, you said that we can come here and talk to you. I've asked you when you first came here, I said, tell me, give me a report on what you have done uh, what this commission has done to stop the violence by police. And you have yet to answer me on that. So no, we can't come here and talk to you because you refuse to help the people. Mr. Herman. Another shooting? Who's involved in the shooting? Isn't it those who come to speak out and protect those who are innocent until proven guilty? Or should we just go about it as business after business? Lives don't matter, take another life. Why should we care? The same reason you parade around here saying that we're all here for good terms and that's to listen to the public's outcry. But definitely not. We have to walk around with our arms up, Mr. Johnson. You know why? Because on my birth certificate, it says I'm an Uncle Tom. I go under the category of Caucasian. But you see, my skin is thicker than that because I come in as many times as I possibly can to protect public's interest and openness to meetings. But when it comes to shooting, unwritten policy, broken policy by our mayor, our mayor who behind closed doors says to you, control these people, control them, keep them out of our business so we can do business as we've done business in the past. I'm not saying that all government is bad, but when I'm pointing my fingers to those who represent law enforcement that are bad, like Lee Baca or others, not to mention by name, Hugo Rossiter, not to mention names like the detective who represented Hugo Rossiter and the arrest and the detainment of Wayne Spindler. But these are just accusations, right? So the whole issue is, are we safe when it comes to the release of public comment under the terms of shootings? It's apparent we're not because you've already heard the outcry of the public and they're saying to you, where's our transparency and the, and the confidentiality of speaking the truth. Thank you. The final three speakers on this item, Nicole Masali, Akili, and Mariela Saba. Is Nicole here? I'm going to use this time to raise up the name of Ryan Joseph and give the time that this young man deserves. 
in terms of our attention to raise up his spirit during this tragic and horrible incident. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Say his name. Ryan Joseph. Say his name. Akili, followed by Mariella Saba. The four conditions that we always deal with white supremacy, institutional racism individual bigotry, and mass denial. As you go into closed session, take the outrage that has come here today. Take the anger that has come here today. Take this question with you as you go into closed session. Why one more black person? How do you explain that? Well, you won't, because the number four, the mass denial, won't allow it. Because you will say, well, it wasn't because of race. You will say, well, he did something that caused it. You will come up with a justification. He reached in his waistband. He did something that caused his death. Because it clearly wasn't the police department that caused it. If he hadn't have done it, he would be alive today. If he just pulled up his pants, he'd be alive today. If he just didn't stand there, he'd be alive today. If he just hadn't been black, he'd be alive today. And if you don't believe me, ask Ezel Ford. He was stopped for no reason other than the fact that he was black, and he's dead today. At what point do we say our lives are valuable. Black lives are valuable. Black lives are valuable. Black lives, they matter here. 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 There's a disturbing recording we memorized all year and the years prior in this place. Every single agenda item, every load of money to keep funding this overfunded, over-resourced department gets a all in favor, aye. That's what's going to happen in closed session today. The only difference is that the doors will be closed. So we're gonna send you off with a whole lot of other sounds and memories and words and voices and truth that was brought into the space here today and every Tuesday prior because you will have awkward moments of silence between your racism and your white supremacy between each other, your sexism, and each of you will be your spirit is too lost, too broken to be true and to speak 
to even say the names of our loved ones, of our relatives, to even write their names. So in that room for those moments, for all the false, all the lies, all the illness in that space, we send in there the loud, disturbing recordings that we hear of helicopters, crying, of siblings hurting, of Ryan Joseph's laughter, of those two people who are not named there, their hopes, their dreams, their visions. May they shake you, may they rattle you. Your spirits are far too lost and broken in that space. Thank You'll you be comments. dealing with that and we'll be showing up with the truth in the streets everywhere. Stop the murders stop this department we keep putting our work and wishes thank into you for your comment department completely coming down thank you we're now existing we're now on item no space two for this in this world two a two and we have four common cards we have michael novick wayne melina abdullah and michael williams So uh, you're going into closed session, and I think that we can safe to say that you're going to treat it like a consent calendar because uh, case after case comes before you and you find them in policy. Uh, this past week, in addition to killing Ryan Joseph, the LAPD was found liable, or not the LAPD, unfortunately, but the people of the city of Los Angeles found liable for tens of millions of dollars for two uh, killings by the LAPD, one going back to 2011. And I'll bet if you look at the records, we'll find that the LA Police Commissioner found those killings were in policy. Uh, you just, uh, you had two items, uh, 10115 and 00216. What happened to 00116? Who got shot before uh, Mr. Gasparini? You're not even dealing with. You have four more detective uh, twos and a detective three. Week after week, they come here and, and, and you rubber stamp in policy, in policy. Michael Zinzin, who was a, a, a critic of the LAPD for many years, used to talk about pattern and practice, and that's the fact. Whatever your policies are, you have a pattern and practice of murder, and you are part of that pattern and practice. I honestly don't know, and I'm asking you it's a serious question. How do you sleep at night? How do you go home and face your family uh, in whatever holiday you celebrate this season? How do you live with yourselves, knowing you're part of that machine that's killing people week after week in this city, and you rubber stamp it in policy. Fuck your policy. Wayne? So at this time, never forget somebody named Leroy Hill. Leroy Hill was the principal witness in the Azell Ford case. Two days before his deposition in federal court, he was murdered gunned down in his car. You fucking cocksuckers killed him for being a witness in a fucking civil case. It's only money. You're going to pay him the eight million anyway. Why'd you have to kill him? Then his wife sued your city departments. You hired the best lawyers Pasadena could find and they dismissed the case in its entirety. You know why? Because you claim privilege under the First Amendment that it was only a press conference, that he had no guarantee that he'd be protected by your department if he came forward, despite the fact that you lured him in and out of the shadows. Two days, he was gonna give a deposition to, sit, to tell us everything he knew, everything. We would have found out when they said gun. They would have found out the murder occurred by your department, but you had to have him assassinated. And there's nobody yet that's come forward. Leroy Hill, what the fuck did Leroy Hill do to you? He came forward because you promised to protect him. You wanted witnesses. 
He didn't want to come forward. You know what happened on the internet? I fucking did a search, AOL. You know, before he came forward, there was a report in HuffPost. So you already knew who he was, but you wanted him to remain silent. He's dead today because he came forward as a witness. You murdered a witness in a federal case, and God damn it, there's gotta be justice for this bullshit. Fuck you. Melina Abdullah. You know, I'm looking at these items and I'm looking at these names and I'm almost ashamed to say I don't even know who Y is or Gasparian. I don't even know what happened to them because 21 people were killed. And so we don't <coughs> have the stories of every single person because there's too many. So I, I'll say their names because every person that you kill is a real person. They're not just an OIS. And I get that Matt Johnson is caught up in this ego thing. I know you got hit last week. And I know that didn't feel good to you. But we got to kill our egos, man. It's not about your ego. It's not about, you know, your bruised ego. It's not about people coming to your office or knowing where you live. It's about doing what's right despite all of it. Despite all of it. All of you, that's what it should be about. All of you, I know it was your egos and maybe unofficial policy that prevent you from saying the name Ryan Joseph when I asked you, Sandra Figueroa, to say his name. I don't know why you can't say their names. Other than ego, there's no other justification. You're supposed to be here for the people. Now, we're getting it. People are waking up. People are realizing that Trump is real, and it's not just confined to Trump, that he's whipped all of your white supremacy into a frenzy, right? And you can be a black face on white supremacy or a brown face on white supremacy. It's your choice whether you want to be that or you, whether you want to be on the side of the people. Are you on their side or our side, in the words of Fred Hampton? either the side of the pigs or the side of the people. The side of the pigs or the side of the people. Can you say Ryan Joseph? Thank you for Can your you comments. say Ryan Joseph? Nobody can say it? Nobody can say it? Come on, Cynthia. You can't say Ryan Joseph? Well, the next speaker, Our next speaker, please, is Michael Williams, followed by Mr. Herman. Say his name. So um, the, the number two on this um, is about a man who was on a manhunt, um, that they have a manhunt who was shot in a, 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 um, a pursuit on a freeway. Um, and they, they, he was supposedly had killed three people um, from what I understood and maybe even more. They said he was on a month long manhunt. He pleaded not guilty. Um, so this is letting everyone know that he's still alive. This is a 32-year-old white male who is still alive um, to plead not guilty. But Kenny Watkins, right. Keith Bercy, right. Carnell Snell, right. Wakisha Wilson, yes. and now Ryan Joseph are dead. weren't suspected of anything but maybe a traffic violation. They can't plead not guilty in court. They can't plead not guilty to your character assassination after their, their deaths. They only have their mothers to do that. And you sit up here and you really can't say people's names. You really can't attest to anything that this commission has done to help anybody in the com community. You really can't do that, but you sit up here 
and you're going to go home and you're going to go to your families and you're going to spend Christmas with your families and you're going to sit there and really say you're doing something or that you're a good person. Think to yourselves, really, what are you standing up for? Thank you. Mr. Herman? So when it came down to Leroy Hill, was it just a matter of just silencing the argument of what was going to be fingers pointing to those who were to be the source of the problem? Aren't we all hardened or saddened by the loss of lives when it comes to LAPD? I'm not pointing at one specific person, pointing to the organization and the way it manufactures our lives, which are citizens' lives, as nothing more than a number. And the outcry, as I point out again, is public outcry. They're crying out for Brian Joseph. They're crying out for Ezel Ford. Because if it weren't for Leroy Hill to see and point out the problem with LAPD and covering up a potential whistleblower, how are we going to deal with the issues that really impact our lives rather than playing on our phones and not paying attention to the public? So the concern now is whether or not the policy of detectives or the policy of our rank and file is really something worth a closed session item. Should it be a closed session item? After all, the officers are only following, following policy. They're only taking the action of what the inspector general is pointing out in the city charter. After all, it's not the rank and file at fault for any of their alleged allegations of human brutality. It comes fingers pointing at this commission. Those who run this commission are supposed to be protecting the lives of citizens such as myself and Ezel Ford. Thank you. And Mr. President, we do have one late um, card. We'll accept it. We have General Jeff. This Good morning, is, this Commissioner. This is the last speaker, though. Thank you. Um, good morning, Commission. Um, I really don't have too much to specifically say to the item because obviously we, the people, don't know any particulars. Um, I just have a problem, ongoing problem, and maybe the Commission can actually do something because I hear, I walked in, I hear a whole lot of a resentment in terms of the, the Los Angeles Police Commission that represents we the people. Um, when officer involved shooting, OIS, it's time to re-examine that and let's really look at that because in most instances, a shooting is separate from a wounding, is separate from a killing. Let's, let's be more specific, let's stop watering it down, let's call it for what it is. Like the saying says, call a spade a spade, let's call it for what it is. At least if it's going to be OIS or OIK, officer involved killing, or officer involved, I mean, because a wound is separate from a kill. Brother Africa didn't just get wounded, he got, it was some kill shots, especially we talking about flesh shots. OIS covers the gamut. Whether, right. Whether and so what we the and what we the people are asking for is an OIS with a hyphen and either a S or a K or something specific at the end of that to separate and distinguish between the two so that we the people can know the difference between a, when someone was just shot and when someone was killed. Though the, you know, if LAPD and it's been proven that they've been falsifying statistics, especially violent crimes, there needs to be more specificity coming out of this uh, co police commission. We need to know. We the people don't talk, police talk. We need to know specifics. So when we look at it, was it a wound or was it a kill? Can you please do that? OIS hyphen S or OIS hyphen K. It's real simple. Help us out. We are the people that you're supposed to represent. Thank you. 
<laughs> we do have one other card from DA. I will accept this card, but this is the this is the this last card. Okay. Public comment. Pu has public passed. comment's been over for for a long time. So if we have no more comment. We have no more comment cards, sir. Okay. Then let's. Uh, the Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss item numbers 5A1 and 2 in accordance with Government Code 54957. The Board of Police Commissioners has concluded its work in closed session. We are back in open session. In closed session, item number 2A1 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. In closed session, item number 2A2 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were adopted by a vote of three ayes and two noes. Mr. Vice President, is there a motion to adjourn?